I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, one of the other reasons we decided to haul out is when we put the lightning protection system on, we need to have a grounding plate. And I did not put a grounding plate on the boat when we were in Georgia. So uh, we're gonna ground the electrical system to this and also the big one gauge cable that comes down from the mast. Um, you only need one, even though there are two hulls, because we, we're never gonna fly a hull, so this hull's never gonna come out of the water. Um, but as long as you get a good grounding on one side, you're perfectly fine. Now, if you have a performance cat, and you're gonna be flying a hull in, <laughs> in a lightning storm, and you're putting this lightning prevention system on, then you need two of these. But uh, I've already been inside and measured where I want this to go. This is the exhaust, the wet exhaust for the generator. And I want to put it right back here. I've got a bunch of Watermaker hardware that's up top here. So I, but I know that if I stay in line with this that I'm going to miss. And I want it about 9 or 10 inches behind there so I'm not interfering with this. So this is a little bit just eyeballing it. When you put a grounding plate on a boat, you want to make sure that this distance is as close as possible. If it gets more than a quarter inch away from the hull, you don't have good bonding and you're gonna get a lot of extra drag. So you would wanna find a more flat spot in the boat to put that. But this right now I think is gonna be fine because right here in the middle, there's only about, God, not even an eighth of an inch of gap all the way around and that's okay. And what made you choose that spot versus the center of the boat or back farther toward the engine? Why this spot? Because this is the shortest path from the compression post off the mast where the uh, grounding wire is going to come down. It's going to come down below the floor, come down underneath, and this is going to be the shortest path for grounding. I can ground back here off of the actual main panel system that's about 15 feet behind us, no problem. But I'm really just concerned about making the path to ground as short as possible. And that's on this side of the boat to get everything as close together as possible between the main electrical, the main grounding bar, and the compression. And now you get to drill more holes in my boat. Kim's favorite. All right. So, ready? So also this is within the repair area and this is a foam core boat and we did all the layup out of epoxy. So I don't feel the need to over drill the holes, backfill them with epoxy and then refill them again because everything that contacts these bolts is going to be epoxy. Um, when this goes in, we're only gonna be using the gold plated um, bolt for grounding. And they do want you to put a little bit of caulking inside the hole but I don't want to put caulking in and then shove this bolt all the way through and gum up these threads. I fear that having the caulking in the threads is going to um, compromise our grounding capability. So what Maddie and I are gonna do is we're gonna line this up, I'm gonna feed this in, and then when she tells me that there's whatever depth that we are where it protrudes on the inside, and that's where I'm gonna be screwing the lugs on, I'm then gonna put caulking on the outside of this bolt and fill up the outside of the bolts here. Then Madison is gonna go through and put a small bead right around the base of the bolts without touching them as they come through. And then she'll drop the washer down. We'll thread the nuts on just hand tight and let it sit for an hour. That's gonna allow a little bit of a bed depth for the caulking to, to create a gasket and to be firm enough. We can come back an hour later and then put a wrench on and tighten it down. 
if we tighten it down too soon, it's going to squeeze all of the caulking out and we uh, risk having uh, water intrusion in the boat. So, Sydney just arrived with the caulking gun, so we're going to do this here in just a minute. I'm gonna feed this into you. I've put caulking on the ends of the bolts. So when they come in, I'm gonna hold it and I want you to put a bead of caulking around the bolt like we talked about before the washer goes on. Go ahead. Okay. Putting the washer on. You have a bead of caulking around both? Almost. And I'll hold the bolts while you thread the nuts on you so you can tell me which one you're doing first. Okay. All right, I'm gonna thread bronze on first. Okay, bronze one. All right, it's hand tight. Okay. Ready for gold. Do you have paper towel? I do. Okay, so. Hold his hand tight. All right, thanks kid. All right, so there, everything's thread down finger tight. And while we do the rest of the, the, the while we do the sail drive covers, um, we'll let this tack up and then we'll just put one final turn on it here in just a few minutes. The grounding plates that I made originally on here, I put on with Sika because that's how the factory wants you to do it. And we made them, glued them on, everything was just fabulous. And uh, we get down to Georgia, or from Georgia, we get down to Florida, and the guy that we hired to clean the bottom of the boat um, says that three or four of them are missing. And I'm thinking, well, that can't be right. We just put them on. And I'm pretty sure we put them on the right way. So I went back and looked at the case of Sika that we purchased, and it turns out that it was all out of date when we bought it. So we used out of date Sika by probably three or four months, and they held on, everything looked like it cured up, but as soon as it got in the water and got saturated, it never, it lost its, its full bond potential, and they just fell off. So when I made them, I had the templates for all four. I thought, I should keep these, just in case I ever need to replace them. And I thought, why would I ever need to replace them? Now, I had Sydney yesterday make new templates, and um, I'm just coaching up her templates a little bit because I'm going to have to cut them out of some fiberglass plates that we already laid up, um, or Maddie laid up. So we took some glass that we used to repair the hole, some epoxy, laid a couple layers to get it nice and thick to just about an eighth of an inch thick, and we're going to cut that with the, I'm going to cut that with a grinder, sand it all up, glue them in, and then we'll throw some bottom paint on them. But that's the task for the next hour. So I'm hoping to get this done in the next hour so that uh, we can leave for the day and we'll be done with all of our bottom stuff, except for painting where the jack stands were. So, all right, got that. Port out. So some kind of funky shapes in here and we're gonna make these new covers that are gonna glue up inside of here. We're gonna epoxy those, not epoxy, seek of those in. And uh, the gaps around the edges, which aren't the prettiest, but kinda is what we have to work with. And then we'll, once that sets up, 
I'll come back in and I'll paint over top of it. So I'll paint these with bottom paint. I don't need to put barrier on them because they're made out of epoxy and epoxy is impervious to water. So if they were polyester, you'd want to barrier coat them before you put bottom paint or anti-fouling on them. But um, I'm gonna clean them up now, wipe up my insides and get the adhesive out and glue them in place. Rubber boots first. It's a good idea. I should put the rubber boots on first. <laughs> God. Hooray! These are cabinet jacks. They're extremely useful in construction when setting cabinets in a kitchen or a bathroom. Today, we're using them to hold in our sail drive covers. Multi-purpose tools. We love that. This stuff sets up pretty fast, so I just need to get it tacked in place. I think it should skin and set here in just like an hour or so. And then I'll be able to come back and uh, fill in the show. gaps. You like that? That's called field engineering is what that is. It's my specialty. Yes, indeed. When in doubt, use a screwdriver. <laughs> Whack! <laughs> okay. Alright. What are you pointing at, Sid? Got Alright, I'm gonna put a little caulking on the front. Make sure that you've got good connection up front. Yeah. I'm using Bostic instead of Sika this time because this stuff is actually paintable and it is above and below the water line. So the, what I did notice last time, so the last two times I put sail drive covers in, I've used 4200 and then Sika. And if you if it's not paintable and you can't actually put an anti-fouling on the bottom of it, what ends up happening is, is that you get a lot of hard growth on the, the actual caulking itself. So I'm using this so I can paint it with bottom paint. So there you go. Actually, I don't need the grease gun right now. You can't. I need the grease. Yes, because we must lube the shaft. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> huh? Quick, get a towel. Don't just leave her sitting there. Huh. <laughs> Jesus, Sydney. Are you serious? Oh my God. That just happened. <laughs> oh. My daughter. Captain inappropriate. <laughs> if you'd like to see a more in-depth installation of our Max Props, we'll link that video in the description box below. Okay, All right, so these zincs are the ones that came off. So, and I'm gonna call that probably 70% is still left on them, 65. Here's a brand new set. And yes, I could leave these on here and it probably would be okay. But um, these are about $35 a pair and it's just one less thing to do when we're in the water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. I'm not keeping these as spares, but this is a good example of what this corrosion is like. Keep in mind that our boat was not plugged in in the canal. The only time I plugged anything in is when I would charge the battery for the lift system. And when I would do that, um, the, it would actually complete the ground because the grounds are tied through the actual engines. So this amount of degradation is caused just from charging a battery, maybe 30 hours total, and that's how much it chewed these away. So this is why putting a galvanic isolator or a um, isolation transformer is so important on your boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace them, and um, we'll be all fresh and new. New polished props, new bottom paint, new zincs. I think we'll be good for the next, hopefully, year. of you who don't know it has been traditionally good luck among sailors all the way back to ancient Rome to put a gold coin or currency underneath your mask and we're doing it 
for superstition above all else, but the lore and history with it is that you put the currency under the mast so that if you had anyone die at sea, then that would pay for them to cross over into the afterlife in heaven or wherever they decided to go. Um, so it was payment for transit between uh, purgatory and the beyond. So we're doing it for superstition. We all held it and kissed it and have good vibes with it. So here we go, putting it right under there. And this is a knockoff piece of eight. It's not a real piece of eight, but it's still gold and it's a coin. So superstition above all else. <laughs> we also had one under the 450, but we thought that it would be the best luck and juju and all of that to leave it under the mask there and just get a new one for Dauntless now. So that's what I got. I think we're all good. Under normal circumstances, standing the mast on our boat would be no big deal. We've done it before on our other boat and have been part of the rigging process on several other catamarans and monohulls. This, however, was a little bit more nerve wracking for me. We'd had several complications with the mast company in getting our rigging correct. So because of my anxiety, I wanted to make sure that Ty had an extra set of hands that was cool, calm, collected, and experienced to help him get through the standing rigging process. So we asked our friend Richard from Rhino Rigging to come out and make sure that we tuned everything properly and make sure that the day was stress-free. So we, when we assembled the mast, we put a pre-bend in it at 75% of uh, the necessary rake and we tightened all of the diamonds, which are basically isolate the spreader that keeps the mast straight. And those were all snugged up and now he's going up to tune the mast, tighten them to their proper tension and make sure that they're even and that the mast is straight. Then once he comes down from that, we'll tighten our cap shrouds or the big lines that go down to the outside of the boat that attach to the chain plates and that will actually put the, the proper rake or bend uh, back leaning angle of the mast so that the forestay or the furler on the front of the boat is straight and the mast base sits perfectly flat on the mast stem. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Sorry, I'm right behind you. All right, you need to go another quarter inch. Okay, while he does that, can you explain to me what you're doing? Because I missed that part. That's all right. So, all the pins are in all the shrouds, and the mast is leaning forward. So, what we're doing is we're uh, creating an even amount of tension on both sides so that the shrouds are the same length, and then we'll slowly tighten them the same rotations and pull the mast backwards. Right now, the mast is leaning a little bit forward, and it's leaving a little bit of a gap at about quarter to three-eighths of an inch up at the, at the mass base and said you should go up there and show them what it looks like and then as we slowly pull this back by tightening these shrouds it's leaning the mast back tightening the forestay and um, snugging everything up so sorry I'm interrupting how long or why are you measuring what are you measuring so we're measuring from pin to pin cotter well, pin to cotter pin or please pin to please that's oh, a guess. standard point on either side yeah it's, oh, okay because the cables are the same length and the shrouds are at the same height. So what we're doing is, is we're measuring the length of the turnbuckle and as you rotate it, it changes length. So we're making sure that they're the same on both sides. Okay. Are we the, it's like we're 22 and 5 eighths. So now, mm -hmm. we're, now we're even 
So now the mast is still leaning forward, so we're gonna have to do even turns to be able to slowly pull the mast backwards so that the mast is sitting flat on the mast base. Okay, right, how do you think that standing the mast went? It went like clockwork. I've done a couple thousand of these and this one was smooth as butter. Perfect. Where can we find you? I'm on Instagram at Sailing the Rhino and, and my, my company's name is Rhino Rigging. Perfect. Thank you so much for all your help. It's been really wonderful working with you. You too. It's hard not to get a little emotional on a day like today. We've owned this boat for nearly two years and she's been floating patiently waiting for us for almost a year. And today, today she finally gets to splash back in the water as a proper sailboat. She really gets to be dauntless today.